Hello everyone, welcome back to the TJ Omega channel for day 940 of our daily content streak. It is Monday, it is time for a news roundup, and admittedly, it's kind of a thin news week. I get the feeling that with all the fan streams, uh, pretty much everything has been blown at this point. We might be waiting for a bit before we get into a good news cycle, so we might have to go into some more out there things in order to get a little bit of discussion in for the week uh, and we're going to do that a little bit. We'll do some sightings reports this week because we don't have a lot to talk about. And admittedly, a lot of what we need to talk about is kind of repetitive. It's mostly just updates on previous things. But there is this story that we're starting with that is absolutely fascinating because it seems to be something entirely new and different. So there are now product listings for something called Swaptacons which appears to be a completely new gimmick line for Transformers, which is odd because there is no specific spot where this is cited. So we don't have any kind of indications that this is an evergreen line that gets sent down to your stores, you know, like Walgreens, grocery stores, etc. We don't know if this is an extension of Generations or, or uh, uh, given the characters, even potentially a movie line. Uh, we don't know. We don't know what this is, it's, or it's not even it's not Earth Spark either, uh, so we're not sure. We have no idea what this is, but it's a brand, it's a weird new toy line that's apparently very gimmick based, gimmick based, and I have no and we have nothing we can conclude from this. So the listings we have so far, uh, we have Optimus Prime and Ultra Magnus. All these are two packs, by the way. Uh, Megatron and Shockwave, Bumblebee and Hot Rod, Grimlock and Snarl. Cheetor and Tigatron, Starscream and Thundercracker, Nemesis Prime and Clench, Shadow Panther and Ravage, and then a Wild Jungle Mission 5-pack with no characters attached. So now, you're really left wondering what is going on here. So the first thing that occurs to me about these listings is all the characters listed are fairly similar to each other. You know, Optimus and Magnus are both semi truck based transformers that are usually that can be repaints of each other the same is true of Cheetor and Tigatron all you know being re usually being repaints of each other Starscream and Thundercracker as well Shadow Panther and Ravage are kind of just the same character in a weird way Shadow Panther was always kind of a a temporary stand-in for a potential Ravage um, and then, you know, another ones are similar here. You know, Megatron and Shockwave, they both turn into guns. BB and Hot Rod, they they're basically have the same role these days. Two similar Dinobots. Uh, Nemesis Prime and Clench, probably the most interesting ones because, one, it's not connected to the previous Optimus Prime, and two, Clench is a... If it's similar to Nemesis Prime, then Clench would be based on the Euro G1 character, which would be a really random pull. A welcome one, because I really like Clench... But it just kind of leaves us wondering. Now, the name Swapticon, I think everyone immediately thought back to the Hero Masher Transformers with parts you could disassemble and reassemble onto, you know, in order to build your own bot kind of thing, which wasn't all that popular. Um, they weren't very well implemented, and really, there's only so much you can do with that because the parts don't really match. I mean, it's fun for the short term, but you know, you're not going to build anything that looks really good when everything, every part is color and aesthetically different. So what occurs to me is that the fact that these are so similar to each other really kind of makes me wonder, well, what else could they be going for here? Um, I, I think back to, uh, you know, some of this, like, could almost be done with, like, color change plastic or something, but that's a, that's a lot to do with the entire toy. Uh, part of it, in my mind, goes back to, like, uh, there is a concept in G1 for a Megatron toy that could also turn into Skywarp. That would be a big stretch. That would be a big stretch. Uh, it's fascinating. Because it really is, like, between the name and the character choices, there's a lot of directions you can imagine them going with. And it's really curious exactly what it is, you know? So this has me exceedingly curious. Uh, we are, we're not going to find out for a while. Uh, that's just, you know, how it's going to go. But you know what? 
Uh, it's going to be some interesting discussion until we figure out exactly what this is or get any kind of new information on it whatsoever. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, whatever it is, because like even the Hero Mashers were kind of interesting. It's like, here's a Hot Rod toy after forever. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's 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 gonna be the it's gonna be a big curiosity for a while. Uh, let's move on to toys we can actually see. Someone got their hands on the new deluxe sideburn, the retool from Shadow Striker, who was basically just a pre-tool for this character anyway. So we kind of knew that this was coming. No surprise whatsoever that it's just you know the same toy but in blue and white with a new head. Not a shock whatsoever. It looks fine. It looks fine. It is an interesting case in that it is a toy that definitely looks like it's missing something because we're seeing a cleaner version of it. You know, the kibble on the back is very flush to the back. It's not like hanging over the shoulders on stems. And of course, he also does not have uh, some of the excess kibble like the bumper on his shoulder. So it, it's odd. On one hand, he looks a lot cleaner. On the other hand, there fe it feels like something is missing. And it really just kind of shows that, yeah, like, even though, like, I don't really like kibble on my Transformers, sometimes that kibble can just become kind of iconic of how that character is supposed to look. So, yeah, um, I think, I think I honestly would be more into the look of the robot if that bumper that's attached to the gun had a way of mounting onto the shoulder as well. You know, I know that's imitating the other weapon that Sideburn had, but it's not really an accurate representation of that, so it might as well become extra detail on the robot mode. Yeah, unfortunately, knowing from the Shadow Striker mold, there's no way to do that. It's just odd. It's nice, but it's a little bit odd, and it's weird. It's, it's weird. My brain is still processing it. Uh, the vehicle mode looks pretty much what we expected. It's the exact same vehicle. They didn't retool it to look any more like a Corvette. You know, of course, they weren't going to because copyrights and trademarks and all of that. They did add a subtle blue flame deco to it, which is not a bad look on the toy. Uh, I do like the vehicle mode, so it work, it works well enough. Yeah, it's just... It's a fun. It's a. It's a. It's an interesting like thought process of like how much the silhouette of a character really matters. You know, it's like seeing Starscream without the wings. You know, something's just. It's not right. It's not right. So I'm. I'm still eager to get it in hand because I do like Sideburns' overall look, and yeah, it's just a nicer mold than the original. It's. It's just a lot easier to me to mess with and play with, and yeah, well, we'll see. I'm looking forward to getting it. Uh, we also have the behind the scenes for Gears. Uh, and aside from just a whole lot of really nice photos of just how good the posability on this toy is and just what a good job they did on engineering, there are a couple of tidbits we got from this which are a little bit interesting. We can go over them as we look through the photos. Um, yeah, for starters, yeah, just the fact they hit all the wheels in robot mode looks so nice. I really wish I'd have a shot of the back. Uh, in order to actually really see how the, the wheels tucked away on the legs. I am aware these are out. Uh, we are getting behind the scenes stuff now because Hasbro, again, is, in, for this wave in particular, is extremely behind actual releases. You know, um, I ordered, you know, I ordered mine and they're on the way. Uh, so there is that. Uh, and I know some have already gotten it in hand because, you know, it's it's a crapshoot. You know, you order from whatever retailer you want, and then, you know, it's luck of the draw who gets it first at this point. But, you know, so uh, they did point out a few things. They did point out that if you have the core class Soundwave, you can use the Laserbeak cassette as something of a stand-in for Gears' special circuit, uh, the one that makes him so grumpy. Uh, so if you want to imitate that scene, you can. It's a little big for this purpose, but it's an existing prop in Transformers that applies. Uh, I would say if you have the world, if you have the uh, smallest transforming transformer sound wave, uh, that that ravage that comes with that, I think is just a, is a more appropriate size. That's a very very tiny piece for something like this, so uh, maybe not, maybe not. 
Uh, vehicle mode still looks great. Uh, the chest that goes to the rear of the vehicle can be used as a little bit of a tailgate, which is kind of a cool touch. The way that the wheels fold in for the transformation gives him an unintentional hovercraft mode, which is kind of cool. Also kind of cool that you can actually fit some effect parts in there in order to actually make that look like he's flying. So that's, that's a fun little bit of detail. Looks great with the other mini bots. I really would have liked to have seen him with more of the, the, the season one mini bots. Put a cliff jumper and a, uh, a brawn in there as well instead of Beachcomber, but it still looks nice. It still looks nice to see them all together. Uh, the fun part is they actually sculpted an M into the back of his robot mode head as a Mysterians homage. So if you don't remember the story, uh, four of the original minibots, uh, you know, with the, uh, you know, gears here included, were actually done by an American toy company uh, in, in an attempt to kind of like do what Japan was doing with transforming robots. Didn't get very far with it. They designed the toys, but never produced them. The design, you know, the designs for some of the other toys went to another toy company who did produce a version of Mysterians, and then another version, you know, the other, all the rest of them that turned into vehicles. Takara bought the designs for and released four extra mini bots when Transformers became a thing. Uh, it's a weird, interesting story. We've done a video on it. We've done a video on it on this channel. Um, it's a really interesting story of just how uh, some of the G1 toys just came about. Uh, but yeah, it's cool that they threw that Mysterians homage in there. They also showed off Mark's original concept for what Gears was going to be drawn into, and you can see where his take on it didn't really have as much way of hiding the wheels. They're just kind of in more typical spots for this, you know, just kind of on the sides of the legs toward the back, behind the shoulders, and then Takara went, no, 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 fam. We got to do this for real. <laughs> We're going to hide all of that. Don't don't you even worry. And they did a fantastic job. I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, it should be really, really nice. Leaves us with very few mini bots to go. Very few mini bots left uh, to get proper, like, modern figures. Need an Outback. Need a wheelie, scary enough. So a mini bot, a modern mini bot collection is almost complete now. See, uh, so those photos we got of Masterpiece Jinrai, we now have larger ones, and we got more shots that include some accessories. Uh, it just seems like the closer we get to the official reveal of this, the clearer the original images are getting, and these are these are very clear. So looking at these shots now, one of my concerns before was these black panels on the inside of the thighs on uh, you know a Super Jinrai. This was not something that was in the animation models, for as far as I was, as far as I knew, uh, at least not in any of the ones I checked. Um, but this does just seem to be detailing. It's not hollowed out. It looks hollow, but it's not. Uh, and then, yeah, it just it continues to just look really, really nice. In the clearer photos, we can see hand and like finger articulation. We can see accessories he comes with. Uh, which includes like the lightning, like the like this like rainbow electricity he has when he's powered up. Yeah, it's just a super nice take on Jinrai. Of course it is. It's Takara making a masterpiece. Um, there's a few things that I'm really curious about. Uh, number one, I'm kind of curious how much uh, High Q or I guess like the uh, the Godmaster Jinrai plays a part in the actual transformation engineering if it's like the other like old power masters where he can't transform unless the engine block is plugged into him which i think would be to the detriment of the toy but you never know um looking at the vehicle mode and then the robot it almost seems as though i'm not actually sure that that chest that that grill can actually be pushed in to insert high q or I, i'm gonna call it high q because i'm used to the power master um, it almost seems like there's an extra panel that might fold, you know, that might flip in to where High Q can be mounted. That would be much more preferable, and wouldn't affect the actual engineering of the toy, which is, which would be nice. Yeah, the images just get nicer and nicer. Um, I will say in these shots, it starts to become very obvious that those big black rifles, they have handles designed for the large one. In standard Jinrai, it's a very awkward looking handle for the gun yeah like in that shot there on the right like it's just it's just a it's silly it's it looks a little bit silly in his hands 
yeah, this is getting really close to announcement. So the 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 listing here is that there that uh, the announce the official announcements. It's due for de- uh, release in December. Uh, Forty six thousand yen for the whole package. So expect about four hundred dollars U.S. Somewhere around there. Very expensive figure. Very expensive figure. Uh, but the April tenth day means that most likely, thanks to time zones. We're probably going to find out about this tomorrow night. Um, If it drops early enough for me to talk about, we'll probably dedicate an entire video to talking about this because I'm really excited for this release. Uh, And I definitely want to hear all the info that Takara hasn't revealed through uh, these little solicitations. All right, so let's go into a little bit of sighting news just so you know what is out these days. So for starters, that five pack of Generations figures, that is out. So you can, um, if you are lucky, you can actually spot this. This was spotted, I believe, at a GameStop. Yep, yep, I see the GameStop logo. My GameStops never get in anything like this. Um, <laughs> they never get in any of the really good or interesting toy releases. So I'm going to keep my pre-order, thank you, and I'm just going to wait for mine to come in. This already came out in Canada as well, by the way. So if you need your animation accurate Autobot crew, that is now going to be available. The uh, GameStop also had the new Deluxes. So Legacy United Wave 2 is now hitting uh, retail shelves. And not just the Deluxes. uh, We also have Leader Sandstorm again at a GameStop being spotted. Again, my GameStops never get in toys uh, like this. So uh, I never get to experience these kinds of sightings. I don't expect to find mine anywhere. But mine's on the way, so that's fine. And then again... Uh, Legacy Wave 2 Voyagers are also now at retail. Um, so is the Core Wave 2, by the way. I actually did my, manage to find my Beast Machines Cheetor in town, which was nice. But yeah, Silverbolt is out, who I've heard mostly great things about. And then, yeah, the, the Starscream, the Cybertron Starscream that is already in my list for top 10 of the year, that is out as well. Please go pick it up. It's a very, very nice figure. Or, you know what? If you feel like helping out the channel while you are getting your toys ordered, please consider using my link to Entertainment Earth in the description below. Even if the toy is just on pre-order, it still helps out the channel by pre-ordering with them. And if the toy happens to be in stock, my link is going to get you 10% off. So you get to save a little bit of money while getting the toys you were going to buy anyway. Uh, Works out for everyone that way. Yeah, lots of new stuff on the shelves to find. Lots of new stuff to shelve. I said this was going to be a short news roundup, and then I've just been talking so much about uh, the swap to cons uh, and the new and like the new mass and Gen Rai. Uh, we are now going very long, so a little, let's speed up the pace a little bit here. Uh, one more sighting: the new Titan Changer Wheeljack has been spotted in Chile, so probably just a couple weeks off from being found in the U.S. Uh, it's one of those new oddball Titan Changers where the leg is just one big unileg. Uh, remember, this is just a bare bones, simple transformer for kids. Some of these turn out surprisingly interesting, but you know, Wheeljack seems very kind of typical in design, so don't expect too much. You know, it's designed for a little kid uh, and a parent who doesn't want to spend or cannot spend that much money. So, but there's still collectors for oddball stuff like this, so that's going to be out soon. An update on the uh, anniversary reunion screening uh, that was originally announced for Australia, but now we found out that, yes, it's going to be in select cinemas in May 15th, 18th, and 19th in the U.S. Um, yeah, This is absolutely the reason why the first four episodes of the cartoon are not available officially on YouTube at the moment. Uh, so here's your chance to see the first four episodes of the, car- of the cartoon on the big screen. And it also includes a table read with some legendary voice actors. Frank Welker is going to be... Look at, look, look, look at them. Look at all of them. Yep, Greg Berger is there as the narrator, which is interesting because Victor Caroli, the original narrator, is still alive. Saw him at a convention. Saw him at a convention last year. Uh, Peter Cullen, of course, is there. Frank Totoro is stepping in for Starscream. That's huge, huge to fill. I love seeing the, I love seeing the upside down Decepticon symbols on his lapel. That's perfect. That's perfect. 
yeah, it's just a cool reunion and a quick table read from some of the voice actors who are still with us. So uh, it should be a fun time. I don't think this events like this are never in my area, but if they are, I'm absolutely going to try to watch because when else are you going to watch the original cartoon on the biggest screen possible? All right, a uh, little update on the Amazon version of the new Transformers vinyl album that's coming out. If you order it on Amazon, you're apparently also getting a 12x12 12 12 card print uh, featuring Matt Ferguson's artwork, uh, or at least a variant of that. Yeah, you can see it down there in the bottom left. So if you're getting the Amazon version, which is limited to 2,000 releases, 2,000 copies, uh, there is a little bit extra that you're not going to get with any other version. So nice to see that there is a little bit of a bonus for the easiest way to you know potentially get your hands on the vinyl. I'm not a vinyl guy, but it's really cool that this is still that this is being released this way. So go out, have fun. Um, and then um, I hate to keep doing this. This is like the second news roundup in a row where we're going to end off on a sour note, but it's it's worth mentioning. Uh, the, so the G1 Marvel comic artist Mark Bright has unfortunately passed away. He did several issue, did uh, several covers for the original G1, uh, but most most importantly, potentially one of the most iconic images in Transformers. This cover of Shockwave that has been homaged so many times was his work. And it's unfortunate that someone who created this that our fandom knows so well uh, is no longer with us. So rest in peace, Mark Bright. Thank you very much for your contributions. And thank you, everyone, for watching another News Roundup. Hopefully next week will be uh, a little bit more to talk about and a little less repetitive. But thanks for sticking with uh, me being long-winded for the sake of getting to 20 minutes. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. I will see you next time.